Hey there, YouTube. We've made it to the end of our four-part mini-series on the Northeastern Ozarks. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. You know, where you have mountains, you have caves. And where you have caves, especially in the old days, you had outlaws. The Miramac Caverns and the famous outlaw Jesse James. Let's get into it. I wandered today, real far. And not just one day either but for an entire week. I saw and learned a bunch, and over the next four videos, you can join me as I wander the northern Cutaway Hills and the eastern Missouri River border regions of the Ozarks. The year is 1941, and Lester Dill, owner of the largest cave in Missouri, has just received a report that a drought has caused the water table to fall so much that a shocking discovery has been made in the already historically significant Merrimack Caverns in Stanton, Missouri. Rushing to the scene, Dill discovered a new room where it was long believed the cave went no further. To make matters even more exciting, there was a number of articles in the new room that were believed to have historical ties to the notorious outlaw Jesse James himself. In combination with the rest of the amazing history of the cave, the newly dubbed Jesse James hideout was just another jewel in the well-decorated crown of the Merrimack Caverns. The story told is that the gang entered into the cave after their nefarious schemes in order to escape from the prying eyes of the law and divide up their spoils. According to the story, Jesse James had a final trick up his sleeve with this cave. Should the law be planted outside the front of the cave, James and the boys could follow an underground river straight out of a much smaller, hidden back exit, thus dodging the law entirely. The cave has also been used by the Osage as a storm shelter, a saltpeter mine for the French, and later the Americans a gunpowder storage facility during the Civil War, and a dance hall during the late Victorian period. Today, the Miramac Caverns remain a must-see destination, not just in the Ozarks, but across America. The cave is absolutely gigantic and features some formations that only exist in a handful of places around the world. A stellar feature of the tour is a presentation and lights display projected right onto a theater-sized cave wall which you'll have to wander over there to see for yourself, because I'm not going to spoil it here. Outside of the caverns are just as spectacular as inside. The cave entrance rests deep within a beautiful valley through which the majestic Merrimack River flows. They offer a river cruise there as well. I contend that the place would be worth the visit, even if you never entered the cave. Whether you be a history buff, an Old West buff, an Ozark buff, a cave buff, or just somebody that's trying to get your family somewhere on vacation, I suggest you pack them on up and give this one a try. You won't regret it. Well, that concludes video four of our mini-series. We've got some great content coming up over the next couple of months, and these videos just keep getting better every time. So please, like the videos, subscribe to the channel, share with everybody you know. And while you guys are at Thanksgiving dinner, go ahead and confiscate the phones of your family members to make sure they're subscribed too. It'd help us out a lot. All seriousness, don't forget to keep wandering.